Hello, my name is Martin. I'm the minister of Hordy Baptist Church, and I just wanted to let you know about a really special gift day that we have coming up. Now, this year has been hard on so many of us, and as a country and as a church, we find ourselves in a difficult financial position. However, we still want to continue the mission that God has for us to feed the poor to tell people about Jesus Christ and to help people grow in their faith. You can support this work by giving to us financially on Sunday the 30th of August. Now over the next few days I will be releasing a video that will give you more details about our financial position as a church, what we want to spend the money on and how you can give to us. But until then, please put that date in your diary. Sunday the 30th of August is a special gift day and we need your help. Good morning and welcome to Hawley Baptist Church Online. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, my name is Dan. And I'm Elise. And we're going to be taking you through this morning. Um, thank you so much for sending in the uh, pictures of you guys eating out or eating in. Um, I see lots of people taking advantage of the Eat Up Help Out, which we certainly have been doing our bit for the economy. Yes, of course. Nothing to do with the 50% off, of course. Um, and this week, we would like you to send in pictures of you reading your favourite book or, or any book that you're you're currently reading. So I'm currently reading Dad's Guide to Pregnancy for Dummies, which um, reading this has, you know, told me, well, I've realised how um, clueless I really am about babies and all that stuff. Uh, are you currently reading anything, Elise? Uh, yeah, I have a couple of audible books on the go. A bit better with listening to them than actually sitting down and actively reading. A little bit too too much. Can't concentrate for long enough to just sit and read. No, audio books still count. <laughs> okay, so shall we have a look at our memory verses that we've uh, been sent in this week? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Matthew 6, 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Woohoo! Woohoo! Matthew 6, verse 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done as it is on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, verse 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, verse 10. Your kingdom has come, your will be done, in earth and as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, verse 10. Oh, lovely, fabulous. Thank you so much for all of those sent in. They're brilliant. Uh, so for next week, uh, if you could uh, send us in a video of you guys with remembering uh, Psalm 107, verse 1, which is, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. So it's a nice short one, a bit easier. But we look forward to receiving those ones and listening to what you guys have got. Great. And if you could send the uh, pictures and the videos into join.in at hawleybaptist.org.uk, that would be brilliant. In a similar fashion to previous weeks, we're going to be looking at the top five. Now, I know how much uh, Martin Shorey adores musicals. So we thought we would, in his absence, do a top five musical. So if you could um, write some comments um, below um, listing your, your favourite musicals. Elise, what's yours? I'm not very good at making a decision on one. I have a few. Um, 
my I'll, I'll give you the my two top favorite which is uh wicked and les miserables brilliant wicked i've heard good things about that yeah. some might even say that it's wicked yep <laughs> they might <laughs> <laughs> and and what about yeah what's yours um so mine's quite an old one so some of the more mature members of uh watching this um is that a nice way of saying old hmm. more mature <laughs> members might remember this one seven brides for seven brothers it's um it's about seven brothers um and i'm one of three um so we used to watch that and that was that was quite good fun growing up <laughs> um all oh, right on to our list so at number five we have West Side Story. If you haven't seen West Side Story, you need to. Uh, it's great. Um, they're actually remaking it this year or next year. Um, and it's based on, on Romeo and Juliet. Um, you've started watching it. I've seen little bits. I've not seen it all. Yeah. I would prefer to actually see things on stage than the film version. Yeah, Elise has this knack of managing to fall asleep during films that she agrees to watch that I really like. <laughs> so I end up just watching them without her in the end. <laughs> Otherwise it has to be through five or six sittings. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem. Don't blame me, blame pregnancy. <laughs> uh, number four is one of my favourites, Le Miserable. You say it like that? Le Miserable? I'm not good on accents Languages here. was never my strong suit. <laughs> Oh, number three is the Book of Mormon. Mm -hmm. Swiftly moving on. <laughs> Not seen that one. <laughs> Here it is good though. When we don't advocate or non-advocate <laughs> musicals. <laughs> anyway, uh, number two is Phantom of the Opera. Another uh, classic, um, but also one I haven't seen. No. I'm a lot more into more modern ones, which is bad really I should further my scope I think <laughs> and number one um, this list was compiled by the Guardian newspaper there were lots of lists of favorite musicals and I just looked at several lists and decided for myself which list I like the most uh, and number one wait for it Alexander Hamilton it's Hamilton um, Wait For It is a reference to the, I keep calling it a film, it's not a film, but it's recently, um, there's been a recording on Disney Plus that you will need to watch. Um, we love and, it. Oh, yeah, it's been on repeat in the car in this household for several, well, about a couple of months now. I yeah, think. yeah. We're getting, we're getting very good at reciting all the lyrics, so if you do need a performance of any of those songs... Uh, we would be happy to... Dan would be happy to. At least would be happy <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we're going to uh, have a couple of worship songs now, and then Daz is going to tell us um, about the exciting things that have been going on in Holiday Club this week before he brings us craft and a story. So it's goodbye from us for a little bit, but... In the words of uh, Terminator, I'll be back. Or maybe we'll be back. Mm. Okay. <laughs>
is coming on the clouds Kings and kingdoms will bow down And every chain will break As broken hearts declare His praise Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion The Lion of Judah is roaring with power and fighting our battles every knee will bow before him our god is the lamb the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world his blood breaks the chains every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb every knee bow before him so open up the gates make way before the king of kings our God who comes to say is here to set the captives free who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah, drawing with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Every knee will bow before Him Who can stop the Lord Almighty? 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 the Lord. Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Every knee will bow before Him This week we ran our very first virtual holiday club and we just wanted to share some of the moments with all of you and some of our favourite pictures we've received. Here we go. Hello everybody, welcome to our virtual holiday club. Lots of fun, we're going to learn about God and we're going to worship him together and it's going to be great. Joseph's story, we have got another challenge for you. We've got some more crafts, a lovely creative prayer for you, and also our fantastic song.
so we had a great time and if you know somebody that would still love to join in the beauty of it being on YouTube is they can go back and watch all the videos that we produced you just need to search for Hawley Baptist Messy Church on YouTube and you can find our channel and watch the three days worth of videos all the links to the downloads are in the descriptions of the videos so anybody can do it anybody can join in so feel free to share it with whoever you know would enjoy joining in I just want to say a big thanks to my team Angela, Selena, Susanna for putting together the activities and for Chris and those three for helping deliver those packs to the, all their families and for Martin for helping out with the song for Helen for helping out doing the stories it was a real team effort, we had a great time thanks for your help everybody, bye! Hello everyone, today we're going to make a mobile phone as Jesus promised his disciples they would always have the Holy Spirit for direct access to God so we're going to make a phone the modern equivalent of direct access to, well, anything really. However, our phone's going to look a little bit old school because modern phones aren't all that to look at. Big thanks to mykidcraft.com this week. I've pinched their idea. You will need some card, a pen, some scissors, buttons or stickers, and if you use buttons, you're going to need some glue. First thing you need to do is draw a template. You can draw around anything rectangular, you can freehand it. If you've got an old phone, draw around that. Then you're going to cut it out. You'll need to draw where your screen's going to go and add some dots where you're going to stick the buttons. On your screen you could draw something, you could write something, or you could just stick some nice paper over it. That's what I did. Next have a rummage through your button box, find some that you like. The more pedantic of us will try and find the same colour, maybe even the same size. Good luck. When you find the buttons you like, stick them down with glue and let it dry. Then feel free to make some calls. Don't forget to take a picture and share it with us. Let's see how this thing works. Hello. Hello. Jesus? Yep. So glad I caught you. We've got loads to talk about. Let me run through what's going on right now. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it's not for you to know. But you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. So believe it or not, that video is quite easy to make, just took a long time. If you want to have a go, I'd love to see your attempt. Pick your favourite Bible story, find someone with a camera, open up paint, and start drawing and taking pictures. Stick them all together somehow, and I'd love to see the finished result. Email me at join.in at holybaptist.org.uk. If you're feeling inspired, get involved. Hello. I'd like to start today with a short quiz. And if you're watching live, please feel free to type the answers into the chat box. Um, the questions aren't particularly easy and therefore if you need to guess um, that's just fine and it's a quiz on famous last words or perhaps more accurately the last words of famous people and I've got it here somewhere and um, just four questions so whose famous last words were et tu brute and that was read in my best Latin accent to give you a bit of a clue Number two, whose last words were, this is no way to live. Number three, 
I'm bored of it all. And number four, who jokingly said, I told you I was ill. You see, as a population, we seem to be fascinated with people's last words. If you Google it, there are absolutely hundreds you can look through. My favourite is Marie Antoinette, who um, apparently apologised to the executioner for treading on his toes, and they were her final words. Well, let's look at the answers and see if you got any of them right. Um, et tu Brute was Julius Caesar. That was the only one that I actually knew. Um, this is No Way to Live was Groucho Marx. Number three, I'm bored of it all, was Winston Churchill. And I told you I was ill was Spike Milligan. So much for them. But maybe the most important final words and certainly the most challenging final words that were ever spoken were those of Jesus. And if we look at Matthew's Gospel in the very last chapter, chapter 28, and we read from verse 19, Jesus says this to his 11 disciples who have met him on the hill. Sorry, I need my glasses. And Jesus says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now that is some challenge, because I've looked it up, and in the world at that sort of time, there were, they estimate, 300 million people. And there are 11 disciples. Um, Judas, um, who betrayed Jesus, is no longer with them, which, mathematically speaking, is about 27 million people each that the disciples have been asked across all nations to go and make disciples. And they didn't have the communication methods or the transport arrangements that we presently enjoy. So no mobile phones, well, indeed no phones at all, no computers, no email, no social media, and planes, trains and cars are still 1,800 years away. And to make matters worse, this group of people are not even a particularly good team. I don't know if you ever watch Match of the Day, but um, in the post-match analysis and interviews, when they're interviewing the, uh, the star striker that's just scored a hat-trick, they always say, well, it was a team effort. Everybody played their part. It's the three points for the team in the league that is all important. Not this bunch of 11 disciples. They were usually arguing about who is the greatest. They were a bickering lot, a doubting lot, certainly an unprofessional lot. Most of them were fishermen. And yet they have this impossible task of going and making disciples of all nations. We read last week that when it really came to the crunch, they fell asleep. And these were the people that Jesus was entrusting. It's once been said that if a firm of management consultants got the CVs of all the disciples for a very important mission, the only person that they would possibly accept would be Judas Iscariot. And look what happened to him. And yet 2,000 years later, there are 2 billion people in our world today that associate themselves as being Christian. So what happened? Well, we need to go back to the book of Acts, the book that follows on from the four Gospels, because what was read wasn't quite Jesus' last words. In his last sentence or last paragraph, but not quite his last words. So if we look in the book of Acts and chapter 1, we read in verse 2 that Jesus does instruct his disciples but then in verse 8, and we need the glasses again, we read, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And that is the difference. That is what makes the impossible possible the disciples had the Holy Spirit now if you ask them what would you need for this mission that Jesus has just asked you they'd probably say 
Well, I would need a teacher to teach me what to do. I would need um, a guide that would show me where to go. I would need a helper to do the job with me. I would need somebody with great um, knowledge of, of what needs to be done and also the wisdom of how to do it. And actually a handbook of instructions would be useful as well. And of course, this is what the person of the Holy Spirit is. He is that teacher, guide, helper, a, a source of knowledge and wisdom. And it's our Bible is the handbook that has been inspired by God's Holy Spirit. And therefore, that was the disciples. An impossible job made possible because they went out with the power of the Holy Spirit. But what about us? Well, things haven't changed. We are still told to go and make disciples of all nations. The task is still there in front of us. And some of us find talking about Jesus and our faith easy. Some of us find it difficult. Some of us would say it is almost impossible. And yet we have God's Holy Spirit who goes with us and works for us. And therefore things are not impossible. Difficult sometimes may be. Things may not already go, always go to plan as we'd expected. But we know that we go in the power that the Spirit provides. And knowing that perhaps this week we might like to be a little bolder in our actions. We may do something that the Holy Spirit leads us to do. I don't know, maybe we share online on our Facebook approach, on our Facebook page, um, this and other services that the church has. Maybe we offer to pray with somebody who we know has difficulties. Maybe we invite somebody round to our house to look and to share from the bank, from the church's services. But it's not for me to suggest what you need to do because with all those other things the Holy Spirit does, the other part of his work is to prompt us, to be that person that nudges us when we need it, to help us to show what God would have us do. And for each one of us, that may well be different. All we need to do is to say, Holy Spirit, come and show me what God would have me do, and then be obedient to it. So, some final thoughts. Jesus sets what seems to be impossible challenges. And then Jesus gives us the Holy Spirit, which enables us to do with God all things. A couple of other challenges that Jesus gives us. One, to love our enemies. Two, not to make money all important thing in our lives. Three, forgive others that hurt us. Impossible? Not with God's Holy Spirit within us.
a commissioning prayer based on Matthew 28, 17 to 20 and 10, 7 to 8. Jesus, we worship you. And sometimes we doubt. Yet we know all authority is yours. So you call us to go to all nations, to make disciples, to continue your mission. You call us to announce your kingdom, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out demons. You call us to baptize in your name. You are Father, you are Son, you are Holy Spirit. We will follow, we will obey and teach all you have commanded. For you are with us always, day after day, year after year to the very end of the age. Amen. Thank you for joining the three of us in the Macram household this morning. Um, and uh, yes, I hope you've enjoyed this morning's service. Um, so just a reminder, make sure you send in those memory verses and the pictures of your books that you're enjoying at the moment or your favourites just remember to send that to join.in at holybaptist.org.uk great um, and don't forget to join us for zoom coffee um, it'd be great to, to see as many of you on there uh, as possible and we're going to end with a worship song so uh, it's goodbye from us again thank you for joining us and we pray that you'll all have a blessed week. Bye. Bye.
留的。